Today we're talking about my four favorite running shoes. I'm not ranking these. They're not like first, second, third, fourth. They're all great shoes, but they have different purposes. But I wanna have a caveat here. You do not need four pairs of running shoes. This is like a weird quirk of mine for sure, that I love running. I love doing different styles of running, different distances. So I have accumulated my favorite running shoes for each different distance, but one pair of running shoes is fine. My second caveat is that I would suggest having a different pair of shoes for running than you have for strength training. Strength training, we are focused on not having very much cushion in that shoe so that you can really feel the floor and that you can be stable when you're doing heavy lifts or you're doing any kind of cross training. But running shoes, we're looking for much more cushion, much more comfort. And that's why we should be having a separate shoe for strength training and a separate shoe for running. Okay, so let's jump right into my favorite long, long distance shoe. The Hoka Mach 5s are my favorite running shoe ever. Now, here's what I'll say about Hoka. Hoka owns so much of the market for running right now, and it's because they make really, really good running shoes. That being said, I'm not really the biggest fan of how Hoka's look. I think that sometimes they look a little tacky with their colors, and I think that running shoes look kind of inherently ugly with how chunky the heel is, but it has a purpose, right? These shoes are the most comfortable running shoes I've ever worn, and they're really great because right out of the box, I don't need any kind of insole. I'm ready to run in these shoes. I don't really have to break them in. They're just a phenomenal, phenomenal shoe. Here's what I'll say. These are my long, long distance shoes. If I know that I'm going eight plus miles, these are the shoes that I'm going to wear. And one of the biggest reasons why I really like them is because I heel strike a little bit. And because it has so much cushion here, it means that I'm able to lean forward a little bit more, get a little bit more of a mid strike when I'm running, even when I'm running long distance. So that's why I really prefer these shoes. I will say that I don't suggest to anyone that you should change the way that your foot naturally strikes the ground. So really quick, if you're striking with your heel, that's gonna be a heel strike. If you're striking midfoot, that's a midfoot strike. If you're striking with the ball of your foot, that's that forefoot strike. Forefoot strike is a lot of times what we'll see when we're sprinting. Some people will have a midfoot strike. A lot of really good marathoners have a midfoot strike, but majority of us do have a heel strike. That's fine. We can slowly, very gently ease ourselves into more of a midfoot strike because that's going to generate a little bit more power. But a lot of injuries happen from us trying to change our strike. So I don't really suggest you going from a heel strike to a midfoot unless you are really trying to improve your running game and you're really trying to take running a little bit more seriously. So all that being said, the Mach 5s are a phenomenal shoe so that you have that comfort in that heel strike and that you can go super long distances. Next up, we've got a running shoe that I've been wearing for probably five or six years, and that is the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus. Like I said before, running shoes are just ugly. And one of my favorite things about the Nike Pegasus is that you can use Nike ID to completely design them yourself. Make them look exactly how you want them to look with any of the colors. So often I'll walk into a running shop and they'll have you do like the little machine to see what kind of shoes you should get, which I think are bogus. And I will pick out the one pair of shoes that I think are not ugly and they'll say, those are like our worst shoes. And I'll be like, I don't care. I really want my running shoes to not look horrible. So that's why I love the Nike ID. And the Nike Pegasus has been a really phenomenal shoe for me while I've been training for long runs. We did our marathon last year in Nike Pegasus shoes. And while they're not my favorite favorite for long runs, I would definitely defer to the Mach 5s for a marathon. I love the Nike Pegasus for a six to 10 mile run. Kind of that mid distance is gonna be really good with these shoes because they're a little bit heavier and I generally will get an insole to make my foot a little bit more comfortable in these shoes. Next, we've got the Camo Ripstop Runners from Noble. These runners are so fun. I generally will opt for a white shoe for a running shoe, but in keeping with Pride Fit Colors, I did get them in lime and I always feel very fly when I'm wearing them. This year, I ran a High Rocks, which is a combination of a 1K run with a bunch of functional movements. So you will do a 1K run, then you'll do a 1K ski, and then a 1K run, and then some burpee broad jumps, and then a 1K run, and then a sled push, and then a 1K run and a sled pull, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I needed a shoe that was going to be versatile enough to be able to feel comfortable on those runs and feel comfortable on those functional movements. 
And that's where I landed with the Noble Runners. Noble is primarily a CrossFit shoe company and they went into runners. And while I wouldn't necessarily wear these for a long, long run, they are super stable. So I do feel comfortable throwing some cross training movements in there and still running, you know, almost 10 kilometers that I ran in that high rocks. They don't have quite the comfort that the Hoka's or the Nike running shoes have, but these are a phenomenal option if you think that you're gonna have any kind of crossover in your routine. And lastly, we've got the Cloud X3s. So these shoes are going to be really phenomenal for a running workout that is two miles or less, where the Noble Runners are really good for that like two to four mile range. These ones are two miles or less, and I generally will use these in any of my functional fitness workouts. So for example, if I was doing a workout that was three rounds of a 400 meter run, with 50 air squats and 30 push-ups. These would be a phenomenal shoe for that because I feel comfortable, it has enough support for the running, but it's also stable enough in the heel where I feel good doing my air squats, right? These are going to be my cross-training shoe. It's definitely not the shoe that I would choose to wear at the gym if there is no running involved, but if you have any kind of running, this is gonna be a really, really great crossover option for you. I also really like that the toe box is really wide, that it's not cramping your feet. That adds to the comfort of these. And On has just done a really good job of making sure that their shoes are super stylish. On is really taking the running shoe world by storm, just like Hoka. I think that Hoka is a little bit of a better running shoe, but On is definitely the stylish running shoe. It's definitely the one that most people are gravitating toward. And I love that you can wear these shoes as just like a normal walking shoe, because that's gonna give people a little bit more support when they're walking as well. The last thing I'll say about the Noble and the On shoes versus the Pegasus by Nike and the Hoka's is that long distance shoes are meant to go in one direction. You're meant to run like this, right? On their websites, they actually say, please do not do any kind of cutting movements, any kind of jumping, because the cushion in these shoes make them incredibly unstable, make them really easy to roll an ankle. So where these are great for running a marathon in, they are not great for you to play a sport in or for you to do some functional movement in. These shoes, however, because they're a little bit more stable and because they don't have quite as much uh, support and cushion, they're a little bit better to do those cutting movements and to do those functional movements. So. If you are the type of person who you really wanna use these shoes just for running, go for the Mach 5s or go for the Nike Pegasus. But if you know that you're gonna be someone who wants to add a little bit of functional movement in your runs, the Nobles or the Ons are probably the way to go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful in choosing your next running shoe. If you have any suggestions for what kind of video you wanna see in the future, whether that's a clothing haul, whether that's a workout, whether that's answering questions about protein powder, put it in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I will see you back next time.